what's up guys? Today I'm going to teach you how to influence spawns using CubeJS. The different ways to do it and the different use cases for each of the ways. Anyways, let's get started. So first off, you're going to want to make a server script and then go on over to entityevents.spawned. If you wanted to just influence a single entity, you could just do something like this. Oops. And then here, just specify, like, what you want. So, I'm just gonna go here and say that if it's a zombie, then we're gonna just cancel. That's, like, the simplest way you can use it. So now we had zombies, and now we should have no zombies. Yeah, as you can see. Anyways, back to this method over here. First of all, I'm going to show you a very simple way that you can influence a couple of mobs in a pretty efficient manner. First of all, we're going to grab Entity from the event. However, over here, we're going to specify that we only want the Entity type. We don't want anything else from it. If it'll autofill. There you go. And then what we can do is just pass that into a switch state. Like that we go here and we go entity.minecraft.zombie then we can return so we do nothing or else we're going to cancel the event which will stop the spawn return does not stop the spawn it basically just does nothing so if we go over here and reload, as you can see, only zombies should be spawning now. Yeah. Now there are some disadvantages to using a switch statement because you just kind of get a little bit less control over your flow overall. But here I'm just going to show you that if you remove the entity type thing over there, you can actually do things to the entities. So, I'm just going to go over here and give them some delta movement. And then give them heart marks. There you go. So now only zombies should spawn, but they should all be flying in the air. Oh wait. Did I mess something up? Oh my, so I'm a dummy. For some reason, I was thinking too much about the if-else statement, so... I forgot to put return in here. <laughs> I'm sorry, that took way too long to figure out. I don't know why I completely forgot how to use switch statements. For those of you who don't know, if you don't put a break or a return or something, it's just going to go down and execute the thing under it, which in that case was event.cancel. So now I'm going to show you a way that you can do this to only a certain amount of mobs. I'm gonna go over here, and if math.random is larger than 0 0.2, we're going to return. So now if we go in game, you should notice that only 20% of the mobs should have that applied to them. 
Now I'm going to show you the case into which you might want to use if else statements instead. I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to say, um, gone. We'll make it an array. And then we'll make another one a red dude. Okay. I want to get rid of creepers and skeletons. And I want to reduce red coats from scorched guns and let's do Minecraft zombie, why not? If I go over here. My recording software is being weird. So now if I go over here, what you can do is you can say if gone dot includes entity dot type, then we're going to event dot cancel. And what that's basically saying is that if the entity is any of the entities inside of this array it's going to run whatever is inside of here which in this case is event.canceled and then next we're gonna do if reduced dot includes entity dot type then we can do if math dot random is larger than 0 0.5 we can return just like that also my bad this has to be event dot cancel i just told you earlier that returning does nothing i'm sorry i'm a dummy but this should work now. As you can see as we fly around, there's way less zombies. There's no creepers, no skeletons, and everything's just pretty good overall. So another way if else statements can be useful is if you want to check for a variety of different conditions. So what we can do here is we can say if uh let's actually do if reduce dot includes entity dot type if math dot random is larger than 0 0.33 then cancel Now what we can do is put some code down here. We could also just add another check, which is why these can be pretty useful. So if entity dot y is larger than 60, then we can also do event.cancel. Otherwise, we can do entity dot potion effects dot add. Oh, it's that's annoying. I don't know how to do it on the top of my head. <laughs> okay, entity dot add delta movement. We're just gonna throw them in the air again. Fuck it. Entity dot hurt mark equals true. Basically, what we're doing is reducing reduce down to 33% amount of the spawns. And then we're checking to see that if the entity is above Y level 60, then we're going to cancel the spawn as well. And if they do successfully spawn, then it's just going to throw them in the air. That's just about all I can think about 
showing you guys in this tutorial. Um, there's... Everything else is just kind of self-explanatory because you just kind of do whatever you want to do with the entities. I've showed you how to do lists, how to do switch statements if you just want to do a couple of, like, vanilla mobs or anything like that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later.